being here. Please allow me to thank Chancellor Sebastian Kurz for being in Paris today after the terror attack that plunged Austria into mourning last week. And please allow me to express our total solidarity with the entire Austrian people. We in France were hit as well, and I know how much emotion all of that generated. Please also allow me to thank Chancellor Angela Merkel, the Prime Minister Mark Rutte, and the Presidents of the European Council and the European Commission, Charles Michel and Ursula von der Leyen, with whom we just had a discussion by way of a video link for a little more than one hour in order to build together our response to these terror attacks, to express the European solidarity after the attacks in Paris, Nice and Vienna, but also to express a, a clear awareness that the threat of terrorism and violent extremism is impacting all European countries. All of our countries um, have been hit, and terrorism from Paris to Brussels, uh, Vienna, Utrecht, uh, London, Madrid, Barcelona, Copenhagen, Stockholm, Nice, uh, and now Vienna, and so many other places. This is a European reality to which we need to uh, bring an answer. This is the reason why we need a coordinated, um, uh, rapid, and joint response. Uh, we've been working on that today. We will keep working methodically on all of that in the coming weeks. And um, with uh, all of our colleagues, uh, we will be discussing these matters in December. First of all, an intergovernmental work in order to improve the security, coordination, and the work of our uh, services to fight against terrorism, also to be better organized when it comes to dealing with any kind of radicalization within our societies. And I would like to commend all the work done by the Netherlands for a number of years. Uh, this is a great uh, source of uh, inspiration and the work done by Austria as well. And that will be at the heart of the French initiatives in the weeks to come. The priority is to fully implement uh, the um, the um, criminal, uh, the, all, all the measures that we adopted uh, back in 2015 after the terror attacks of the time. In uh, three days, it will be five years since these attacks took place in Paris. And on that occasion, we will uh, gather together uh, to pay tribute to uh, the victims of, um, of these terror attacks in our um, hometown in, in in our capital Paris and it is at the time uh, at the time after these attacks that we were able to adopt a number of um, important measures together and what we need to do is to fully implement all of them uh, developing uh, some uh, uh, joint databases the cooperation between our police forces intelligence sharing strengthening our uh, criminal scheme uh, the um, implementation of the PNR system um, it is, like I said, important that we fully implement all of that, and the databases should be fully interconnected because any flaw in security at our external borders or within any of our member states is a security risk for all of the member states. So we need to finalize the implementation of these measures uh, when it comes to information sharing and all of that, and we will be taking stock on that. The second topic we discussed is the fight, a vigorous fight against the terrorist propaganda and uh, hate speech on the internet. The internet is a space of freedom, like the social networks, but they can be only such a freedom if there is a security. And if the internet, uh, the internet cannot be a place of hideout for those who are blatantly disregarding our values and trying to indoctrinate into some deadly ideologies. This is the reason why we need to be able to remove terrorist content from the internet within one hour. We need to adopt this regulation very soon. At that time, we launched in, uh, in the summer of 2017 with Theresa May some in, uh, an initiative, and we need to finalize that. This is also the reason why we fully support the Commission's intention in early December to put forward a new piece of legislation, the DSA Act uh, regulation for the withdrawal of hate speech on the Internet. Lastly, like I said uh, when I uh, traveled to the Spanish border uh, last week, we need to work together on reforming the Schengen area. It is essential. And tackling 
Of course, illegal migration is different from terrorism, but of course we still need to look into the connection between these two topics, as we've seen in Nice, sadly. Schengen is an area area of free movement, and it is one of the main acquis of Europe. But this was based, well, this promise of freedom of movement without internal border required uh, there was another promise of protection and security at our external borders. And we did not sufficiently deliver on this second promise. And all public opinions will not um, support, continue to support the freedom of movement uh, without internal borders unless we strongly reform the Schengen area. We've seen that in the context of the pandemic. We are seeing it when it comes to terrorism. We therefore need to reform Schengen. First of all, in order to strengthen the security security of the EU's external borders. Second, we need to substantially improve the mechanisms used to assess the Schengen of the, uh, the functioning of Schengen. Thirdly, we need to update the governance of the Schengen area because today there is no regular political monitoring to deal with all relevant issues with borders, asylum, migration, internal security. So I very much would like us to have some sort of an internal security uh, council body. In the coming days, we will um, uh, make a proposal um, for, uh, in order to reform Schengen, and we will share that with all of our other colleagues in order to move forward in reforming Schengen. Reforming Schengen is about being free and safe at the same time. So once again, I would like once again to thank uh, um, the Chancellor for being in Paris today and all of our other colleagues for um, quickly joining us. Um, and. Uh, working on uh, Europe's uh, indispensable reaction to what we're going through.